welcome back to the Crush Your Goals with Christy podcast, the business podcast where you'll find clarity over confusion, community over competition, and the confidence to crush your goals. I'm your host, Christy Johnson, wedding photographer of 14 years and online business manager for service-based business owners dedicated to helping you do more of what you love and let go of the rest. I am so excited today. We're going to be continuing the conversation about online business managers that we started last week. Today, we're going to talk about the differences between OBMs and VAs or virtual assistants. A lot of people think that they um, have some tasks that they want to pass over and they think that they want a VA, but maybe they're asking for something a little bit more high level than that. Or maybe you want to become an online business manager or a virtual assistant, and you're not sure about the differences. Maybe you've been a VA for a while, and you're thinking, I really want to level up, get a little bit more money. I've been working as a VA for a while. I have some experience, and I'm ready to take it to the next level. You may be ready to transition into an OBM. A lot of OBMs begin as VAs to get that experience working with someone else's business, and then they transition into being an online business manager. So we're going to talk about what the difference between a VA and an OBM is, and how to know which one you should hire for your business or which one you should be if you are wanting to get into this field. So let's talk about VAs. A virtual assistant is someone who helps you with tasks in your business, and the reason it's called virtual is because They're not working with you physically. They're usually someone that you work with remotely and they can do their work online for you. They don't have to be meeting in person. They might meet up with you on Zoom or uh, FaceTime or whatever, and they'll generally do a lot of the work on their own time and uh, do tasks for you. So virtual assistants are implementers. You tell them exactly what to do. You give them tasks that you want them to work on and they will do them for you. The best type of tasks to give a virtual assistant are repeatable tasks and processes that you just don't have time for anymore as you grow and um, as you start to step into more of your zone of genius. These repeatable tasks can be things like graphics creation. If you have a template, VAs are not graphic designers. Some of them may offer graphic design services at an extra cost, but in general, if you have a template and you just need them to edit some text, then they're going to do that for you. And typically, you are going to need to provide the copy for them. So the words, the text that you want to be on these graphics, um, that's something that they can do. If you have a template and you, you, for example, me as a podcast host, I had a VA for a little bit. And I have the same graphics that I send for my business for every podcast episode. They're slightly different with the colors and the layout and they're different for platforms. But in general, it's just a basic template. And all the VA had to do was to put the episode title on these pre-made graphics that I already had. So they weren't having to write copy. Um, They were just putting the text that I provided them. So typically a VA is not going to be doing any copywriting. They're not going to be thinking outside of the box necessarily, but they're going to be doing repeatable tasks for you. Graphics creation is one example. Um, Scheduling of social media posts is another example. Now, there is a difference between a social media manager and a virtual assistant. A a virtual assistant will typically just be doing things that, that you give them clear, detailed instructions for, and they will just repeat those tasks. So you're providing the graphics for them. You're telling them, this is the schedule that I want to post. Or maybe your social media manager is giving them these instructions, but you're saying, this is when I want you to post. This is the schedule. These are the captions that that I want you to use. Here are the hashtags that I want you to pull from. And here is the content. They're not typically creating that content, although some may uh, as an add-on. Um, but they're not typically strategizing and telling you, hey, I think these are the best ways, place, times to post. Um, that is something that a social media manager would be doing. The VA is just going to be taking the things that you're already doing and doing them for you, and they need detailed instructions. A VA can also send invoices for you, um, keep records for you, and things like that. Anything that is a repeatable process that you can give clear, detailed instructions for, a VA can do. So it's 
often the first person that people hire in their business because they need a little bit of extra help. They want to focus more on their zone of genius. And they're, they have things that they're already doing that they just want to pass along to a virtual assistant. But they're typically not doing high-level um, thinking knowledge work. They are doing tasks. So they're an implementer as opposed to a strategizer. Another thing for a VA, you have to manage them. So you have to give them the deadlines. A lot of times business owners hire a VA and the VA is like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do because they didn't give me clear instructions. And then the business owner is like, well, I have this VA, but they're not really doing anything. And, you know, I wanted them to do this, but they're not doing anything. And that's because you have to manage the VA. You have to step into that role and tell them, this is what I want you to do. This is when I want the tasks to be done. And so if you don't have good um, uh, uh, experience managing people or it's not your strong suit, then you might need someone else to manage them for you. That's where an OVM can potentially come in. But just keep that in mind. A lot of people hire VA and then they're underwhelmed by their services because they're like, well, they didn't do anything for me. And then the VA is like, well, the business owner didn't give me any clear instructions. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing and when I was supposed to be doing it. And you'll see this happen a lot with the business owner and VA relationship. So you have to manage them. And also you typically have to prioritize for them. So it's not, you know, maybe you just dump a lot of ideas on them and expect the VA to make those decisions. But for the, from the VA standpoint, they're overwhelmed. They're like, I don't know what you want me to do. You gave me all these ideas, but I only have so many hours a week with you. I don't know what you want me to prioritize. And they can be overwhelmed by that. It's not their fault. It's just the nature of what a VA does. So you have to prioritize for them if you hire a VA. So again, a VA is going to be an implementer. There's someone that can take over tasks for you uh, when you give them detailed instructions on what to do. So it's a great first person to hire in your business to take over some tasks for you. But it's not, uh, it's not someone who is a manager, not someone who is thinking, who is doing high level strategization. Is that even a word? High level strategy for your business. Okay. So let's talk about an online business manager. A lot of people get OBMs and VAs confused. And a lot of, you know what, that's fine. A lot of people are doing a crossover between the two. And that's fine as well. However you want to run your business is great for you. Like that's what I love about being a business owner is I can do whatever I want. I could offer some tasks that are more in the VA world and some that are more in the OBM world and that would be fine. But in general, an OBM is able to make high level decisions. You don't have to tell them exactly what to do. They have business experience and um, managerial skills to be able to think at a high level and strategize for your business. They can also manage a team. So they can manage a team of VAs. Maybe you have a VA to help you with um, your blog post. Maybe you have a VA to help you with marketing. Maybe you have a couple VAs. An OBM could manage them for you. Or maybe you just have one VA and you're having trouble managing the VA and giving them tasks to do. An OBM can help you do that. An OBM is able to prioritize. So an OBM is going to take time to get to know the vision of your business the goals of your business and where you want to go. And they're going to help you prioritize the tasks that you need to do or that your VA needs to do to get you there. So a v an OBM is going to see projects through to completion and oversee all the tasks that it takes to get there. Essentially, they're taking over the daily operations of the business. So in this sense, they're a strategizer, not an implementer. That's the difference. OBMs are strategizing. VAs are implementing. Some OBMs offer a mixture of strategy and implementation. In fact, that's what I do. I actually do manage uh, inboxes for my clients, their, their Gmail and their calendar. And some OBMs don't offer that as a service at all. And instead, they would have a VA that does those types of tasks for them. But I really enjoy um, the inbox management and the calendar management and also a lot of people are coming to me when, and, and I'm the only person that they've hired for their business or the first person that they've hired for the business because they think they want a VA, but really they want someone who is able to think at more of a high level and strategize and prioritize. And so I can kind of bridge that gap for them. So that's why it's important to chat with the person that you are potentially thinking of hiring and see, okay, what do you offer? What do you need from me? 
and make sure that they're a good fit for you. Sarah Noct is a uh, is a well-known OBM educator in the business world, and she says that business owners work alongside OBMs at the forefront of the business. So essentially, you are the visionary and the OBM is the manager. If you don't have a business manager, then you as the business owner are both the visionary leader and the manager. And this can be overwhelming. Huh. This is where you uh, maybe feel that sense of, man, I know where I want to be, but I just keep getting stuck doing all of these busy work, these tasks and, and managing people and, and doing all these things. And maybe you're struggling, maybe you're frustrated, and maybe it's time for you to consider bringing on an online business manager onto your team. So these are just some of the differences between a virtual assistant and an online business manager. A virtual assistant is someone you tell them exactly what to do. They don't generally think outside the box. If they miss a deadline or if someone else on your team misses a deadline, like let's say your VA and their copywriter have to work hand in hand. Well, if the copywriter doesn't get the copy to the VA on time, the VA is just going to be like, I'm sorry, I can't do this task because I don't have the copy. But an OBM could come in and manage those things for you and work with the VA and the copywriter to make sure that they get things and push them out on time. You see, you see what I'm saying? So that's where an OBM can help bridge that gap for you. Um, a VA is going to do repeatable tasks and processes that require detailed instructions. You have to manage them. You have to prioritize for them. They're an implementer or um, Sarah Noct says a workhorse in your business. Whereas an OBM, they're able to make high level decisions. They're able to manage a team for you, make sure that things get done. They're able to prioritize and see projects through from uh, initial inception to completion and oversee all those tasks. They're able to take over the daily operations of the business for you. So they're a strategizer as opposed to an implementer. If you are ready to hire an online business manager for your business, contact me. I have one more spot available for this quarter and I would love to get on a call with you. You can contact me by booking a discovery call. I'll have the link in the show notes or you can go to calendly.com forward slash Christy Johnson forward slash hotline. So that's calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com slash Christy Johnson slash hotline. I would love to chat with you and see if I can get you some help in your business as your OBM. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next week on the Crush Your Goals with Christy podcast. Thanks for listening.